yes, we are clear to go. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, we're doing like a little pop-up uh, guest spotlight here this evening. And um, I met this young lady, uh, maybe for, I think it was uh, maybe three weeks ago, three and a half, I'm not good with time, maybe three and a half weeks ago. That was so. where I met personally, but I did right. see you at the TEDx last year. That is exactly right. <laughs> and Fur is uh, doing a, a project that is like none other that I've seen before. And it's so very important to what we as women would hope that we could pass on to other young ladies out there and, and inspire even uh, other women as well. So everyone put your hands together for her Kajano. Yay! <laughs> Artist extraordinaire, uh, <laughs> phenomenal person, um, just a, a light um, in this world. I appreciate you so much, even though we spent just, you know, not that much time together. I really felt like uh, I connected with you. Uh, in some very special way. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and how you got interested uh, in art. Well, uh, I am originally from Brazil. My name is Fer Cadiano. It's short for Fernanda. And I will say, like, I started being interested in art since I was a kid, you know, like sketching on the walls at my parents' house and getting in trouble for that. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I only started doing it uh, seriously when I moved to New York on my early 20s. I went to the Art mm -hmm. Students League for, for you know, school. And yeah. I, am I have a degree in marketing and advertising. So it took me a little bit of time before I could believe that I could do art as a business. But mm -hmm. it was, you know, out of luck and out of faith that I just had to do art because, you know, with the move, I couldn't work on my degree that I had for advertising. So that was kind of good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got works in mysterious ways, right? <laughs> in doing that. Now, uh, you are here now in the Low Country. You are also um, uh, the co-owner of a local art gallery downtown in Charleston for a bit. Well, I was co-owner at the Low Country Artist Gallery for a year and a half. And mm -hmm. since I started this project, I realized that I didn't have time to do everything. So yeah, yeah. I quit late last year in December and I resumed my, my activities with the gallery um, by March. And mm -hmm. now, you know, because the, the whole idea was that I would focus on this project. And yeah, yeah. then COVID started. So, you know, it's not going as fast as I would like because I have, you know, kids at home, husband working from home. So it's a bit of a mess. But uh, yes, I was co-owner and I decided to move. Yeah. Brave, yeah. And, you know, and that's brave, to, you know, for for anyone to really do that, to realize that, you know, this is I, I want to start doing something different, um, recognizing that, you know, time is of the essence and um, we can't be everywhere every time. And especially if you're going to be working on a special project, like what you're working on, you really got to devote your time to do that. So to be able to walk away from mm -hmm. something that I'm sure that you love, and I'm sure that people appreciate it, the job that you did and uh, the venue that you provided for local artists and, uh, for the low country, um, as a whole. So the project that I'm so very happy to have been asked to be a part of is called like a girl project. Tell us where that concept came from. Well, um, I guess I can say like I'm a feminist, have been a feminist since I could remember, even though I didn't really know what it was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have always been fighting for, you know, equal yeah. rights and all of that. But mm -hmm. um, so when I moved here, I decided to start working on landscapes because I figured that that was, you know, something that I could make a living out of. So I still paint a lot of landscapes just for that reason. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I decided to work uh, on some portraits again. And I went for a couple in bed. There was like a nude painting. And I was okay. criticized because um, apparently the low country is very conservative and I shouldn't be painting nudity. <laughs> okay. But, right. So <laughs> we are the holy that, state. Yeah. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so that triggered another piece yeah. that I did that kind of like, uh, was selected for the juried show at the Spoleto at the City Gallery last year, the Pico Spoleto juried uh, exhibition. And it's basically, I'm giving the finger. So I say like, I will do what I want to do. And that just really triggered the whole movement because I was like, listen, you know, you can't really tell me what to do. And then I realized that 
as women, we are constantly told what to do, what not to do, what we can do and what we can't do. So I was like, well, that started a feminist series. And from that, I was, I need, I really need to do something with this. So I was brainstorming with a friend of mine, Robin, and she's, she's a great helper in this project. And I said, I just really want to paint like women that show that it can be done. You know, women that are strong, women that are powerful, that are, you know, great achievers. And so the project started from that. And so it's been, it's been a, you know, a challenge, but I am yeah. so happy. I've met these amazing people. So this is so exciting. Yeah. <laughs> it is so exciting. And I see some of the, uh, the finished projects back there. I know you might still be working on one, maybe, not sure. <laughs> right there over your left shoulder. Um, yeah. But tell us some of the uh, women that you had the, the honor of, of portraying. And I had a chance to see some of these portraits in person. Oh my gosh, the detail, the, <laughs> the little nuances that you would find to add to really bring those portraits alive. Tell us some of the women who are part of the project. Well, I have from, you know, helicopter pilot for the Navy to uh, project manager for Boeing and mm -hmm. Pixie Paula, which this way, uh, no, this yeah, way. she is yeah. <laughs> an entrepreneur, <laughs> owner of Skirt yeah. Magazine and a distillery as well as like uh, some other brands. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I can show a few of the portraits, like yours. Yes, what love to see. Oh, okay. <laughs> yours is right there. I, yeah, I, there I, I am. Finish. Yeah. <laughs> this piece is uh, Pixie Paula. Yeah. I figured out, like, she's so uh, girly that I had to add some crystals to her painting. So it's not yeah. just, uh, it, you have to see it in person because the whole painting kind of like shimmers. Yeah, and it does. It really okay. does, people. I've had the opportunity to see that. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Um, what's the one that, yeah, that one right there. This is Missy. I love that one too. She is mm -hmm. a director at Benefit Focus. And okay. I just love how, you know, her focus is to get um, people's mm -hmm. quality of um, life at work. So I painted her in one of the positions that she likes to be at. You know, she sits on the, like, with the computer on her lap. And yeah. I added all these plants because I think that uh, nature reflects, you know, uh, quality of living. And mm -hmm. she's mm -hmm. just amazing. You have to meet her. <laughs> yes. Now, and I really love this one. Yeah. Tell us the story behind. Tell us a story. It's a very interesting story behind this one, especially with the bell that's right there on the fire engine. Oh, yes, that's right. I forgot about that. Uh, yeah. This is Chief Engram, and she yeah. is uh, the chief firefighter for the Isle of Palms. And it's so cool because, like, I love how all the women in this project, even though like they're really badasses, they're still very uh, girly. So I went girly. to take a picture of her, and she was like, "Can you wait until I get my hair done?" <laughs> so, you know, like, she's absolutely amazing. And she said, "Like, yeah. we have to wait as well until mm -hmm. my new truck arrives because we got a bell." So I ended yeah. up help. <laughs> That is awesome. Love it. So, yeah. Love it. Love it. <laughs> She's just uh, an amazing woman. Now we have Karen. Mm -hmm. She worked for NASA for 15, 15 years and she yeah. earned some medals. She's very, I put a mention of the medals over there. She doesn't mm -hmm. like to talk about them. She's very uh, humble and She's just one of those people that I met through um, Make-A-Wish Foundation. I always mm -hmm. make for their make, uh, Wishes in Blooming Magnolia Plantation. Mm -hmm. And I remember that I saw somewhere that she worked for NASA. So I approached her going like, you know, do you know like anyone at NASA, like a scientist or any, anything? And then she sent me a video of an interview of her and I was like, Oh my God, oh, you yeah. are perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up putting her in the project and she's yeah. absolutely amazing. <laughs> oh my gosh, now immortalized in her own painting. Did, uh, for how long does it normally take um, once you get started uh, on mm -hmm. uh, a portrait like that? Well, I will say it depends on the person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have a process that is kind of like, um, I take a lot of pictures and I try mm -hmm. to capture more a feeling than the visual looks of the person. So okay. uh, for some people, especially the ones that are more open, I find it easier to capture that. So the portrait just okay. flows and I can't be done like, 
in a couple of weeks but okay. some people like i struggle it takes me like months to finish i have like right. one of the ladies that i just like i find her one of the most beautiful women i've met and yeah. i just couldn't get her you know like and she's just amazing and i struggled for yeah. months like five wow. six months and i couldn't do it <laughs> okay and so in a case like that if you're also working on someone else you'll kind of set that one aside and then start working uh, a little yes. bit until the creative juices come back for the other hmm. <laughs> yes, I I'm very, very hectic paint painter, if you think about that, you know, because I usually mm -hmm. have uh, 10 to 15 canvases going on simultaneously in my studio. Wow. And wow. the way I work with them, you know, I, I do some work on one painting and then yeah. I allow it to sit so I can, you know, refresh my brain mm -hmm. from that. And then mm -hmm. I start on, the other, on another one. So when people ask me how long it takes for each painting, I have yeah. a very hard time trying to put the numbers together because I work with yeah. all like mixed. <laughs> all mixed. Right. And so would you say that, that it's the energy that you're painting with or the energy that you're receiving uh, from what you put on the canvas? And so that's, that's what, um, um, I wouldn't say motivates you, but that's where once you connect or you connect with that energy from that person, even on canvas, that's when yes. things start working, right? Oh, absolutely. It has to do yeah. with the connection. It has to be with the, you know, the flow of the energy going back and forth. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yes, that's very much that. <laughs> okay. Now, what is the goal once you're um, finished with uh, the paintings, which in total, how many will you have um, by the time you're done? 40 portraits. Wow. Uh, okay. And it's funny because like I started much smaller and when I decided that I wanted to do an exhibition and mm -hmm. I wanted to put a book together with all the bios mm -hmm. so it can inspire the younger girls when they're, you know, looking at uh, career choices and what they can be when they grow up. Mm -hmm. So uh, it started getting bigger and I have uh, the plan is to have an exhibition with a fundraiser. We're still trying to figure out what association we want to support because it has to be an association that helps women uh, position themselves in life, you know, so it can be like educational or, you know, like work wise, we're still trying to figure out who, you know, like will be the destination for the fundraiser. Um, but also, you know, like the book for me is a huge part of this project because we'll have the stories of all these fabulous women and they're all local based. So I want, I, I think that that alone means a lot because, you know, like if you go talk to a girl and they say like, oh, I have this hero in my head, but you know, it's like someone in history, it's someone that is like a celebrity, but they don't have access to those people. And then when you have like everyone is locally based, they could be your neighbor, you know? So that just makes the whole, like, you know, all these really successful, amazing women they, they're someone like you, you know, you can do that as well. So, oh, thank yes. <laughs> thank you. And, it's, and by you saying, I didn't want to bring myself up to the forefront there. Yes. But uh, I'm right behind you. Um, hey, Tessa. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tessa on canvas. And uh, thank you so much um, uh, for doing that and, and, and make me a part of, of the project that hopefully will inspire generations to come. And uh, we definitely want you to keep us posted on when that exhibition, you know, post COVID, of yes. course, yes. Uh, when that's going to be so we can help get the word out for that. But in the meantime, when you're not <laughs> working on paintings and, and doing your love there, what do you do on a daily basis? Because I know you're a mom as well. You're a wife as well. And, yes. and you've got, you know, <laughs> your paintings and whatnot going on in between. How are you managing all of that? Well, it's very hard, I'll say, like, um, I was just before coming downstairs, I was having this uh, fight with my son because, you know, he's yeah. only six and he didn't want yeah. to sit and eat his dinner. <laughs> so, oh. like, um, so, <laughs> yeah, I'll say the biggest struggle right now because, you know, like, I, I love my work and I could work 24-7 and just, like, I'm absolutely, like, dedicated to it because it's my passion yeah. uh, but of course I have to fit everything because you know having the family I have, we have two kids um, the younger one is my my six-year-old boy that I brought yeah. with me from Brazil and I have a uh -huh. stepdaughter she's 14 
Awesome. And everyone's around now, you know, like my husband's working from home, everyone's <laughs> here. So yeah. like I try, I yeah. try to keep the kids entertained somewhat. So uh, that has put my project in a very slower mm -hmm. pace. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, awesome. And I see a couple of the uh, comments uh, here. We've got Lynn, who's here. Hi, Fernanda. Glad to be here. We've got Tia Clark saying hi, ladies. I'm so excited to project. be a part of this project, <laughs> Tia Clark. So Glad yes. to have you a part of it as well. But um, so many wonderful women that you, you've amassed right now, and they're like, all of them just like sitting there staring back at you, all of their accomplishments, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm sure it's not the last on the list of accomplishments that, um, that they will have. Um, mm -hmm. But thank you so much for highlighting that, for having the heart to do so, for um, dealing with issues um, that support women uh yeah. and, and things of that nature and really just you know being a gift um mm -hmm. to the world with what it is that you do now uh, when you're not painting portraits of of women accomplished women uh what else do you do i know you do low country art uh, <laughs> i have i know you're wearing a scarf your peacock scarf that was actually one of your paintings tell us about yes. that you how you've turned some of your art into actual things that you can wear like the scarves yeah. tell us about that well, having a marketing background, I've always looked at art as a business as well. So um, I, I can consider myself an entrepreneur and I see my art and I keep thinking, you know, like, what can I make with this besides selling originals? So, some people right. just don't have the uh, investment to spend on an original or the wall space. So I was like, well, right. I'm going to do product. So I have scarves, mm -hmm. which is, you know, like this one I'm wearing right now. Yeah. It, from a very large painting it's a 60 mm -hmm. by uh, 40 or 30 something canvas yeah. and I turn so I photograph my paintings and I turn them into products I have pillows I have mugs I have uh, puzzles right now which you know is very yeah. helpful for people that are staying at awesome. home and they have you know yeah. to keep entertained I even do like coloring, uh, free coloring pages. I started that during the um, uh, beginning of the pandemic. I figured some oh, people wow. would like to, you know, have something to do, entertain the kids or, you know. Yeah. And so yeah. I made them available for free just because, you know, that's something I can do to help. And that's awesome. And where can folks, uh, where can folks get that? Where well, they, uh, do you have a link for everything? Yes. All on my website, it's fecadiano.com and, um, well, I'll put the link on the, on the, okay. on the yeah. it's kind of hard to spell, but yes. Okay, so, right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, great, great. Well, we do want you uh, to do that. And again, thank you for uh, spending some time with me during my break because I'm running here, there, yeah. uh, and everywhere. It's time to grab a little bite to eat right now. But for, thank you so much. Hope to see you again in person where we can share that hug. And um, looking forward to uh, more developments with the Like a Girl Project. And people can follow you on Facebook as well, right? What are a couple? Of, uh, what are your pages? Facebook and Instagram. You know, like I'm I'm on social media. Everything is Fercajano, so it's easy to find. And mm -hmm. you know, I keep posting updates on all the projects and the new stuff that I'm creating. So yes, please okay. <laughs> All right, wonderful. Thank you, my dear. So good to see you. Thank like you. love, much love to you. Love you, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. All righty. Good night. <laughs>